channel. Hope you're all doing well. Um, today I'm up at RF Bempton, well the site of the old uh, radar station here which was part of the road project. Um, so I'll show you what remains. Come with me and let's look around. So this is the uh, Type 80 radar support building. The radar would be above this. It would be uh, stood on four legs. Just there's the uh, guard room and access to the bunker. I think that building was for one of the uh, height finders. Clive's with me today. Not been up to this site for many years. I just thought I'd come and see what's changed, see if anything else has been knocked down. Full of cow muck. Got some original light fittings on the wall. Part of one of the blast doors, which is off here. I believe there's another blast door or two on it's actually sat on top of the roof of this. I could see it from the drone footage. You liking it, Clive? Top of the range. Good. Been waiting to come here for a while, haven't we? This was a huge radar, was this? I'll put some uh, computer generated footage on now so you can see what I'm talking about. See what it would have looked like. The mighty Type 80 Mark I, with a range in excess of 240 nautical miles. It had such improved range and performance that it made much of the existing rotor air defence system redundant. The Type 80 was huge. The reflector was 75 feet wide, 25 feet height, and mounted on a 25 foot high gantry. It's a red hot day today. Lovely view out to sea. Luckily we've not been caught by the farmer yet, so we're doing well. I believe he's gone a bit rogue as the uh, farmer. Just there with the air vent above it, that's the emergency exit for the bunker. Which we'll go take a look at in a few minutes. Go check out the guardhouse first. I believe the bunker is sealed up now, but you never know, some might have opened it up again. I think that's one of the uh, switchgear buildings for the one of the height finders. To find heights, three nodding Type 13 Mark VI height finders were used. The Type 13 head was developed in early 1940s. In operation, the Type 13 was pointed at the target aircraft by the operator using a remote control at the radar screen. The antenna produced a narrow beam which nodded vertically six times a minute. The nodding mechanism was quite simple. It consisted of a motor-driven crank and a push rod. On the radar console in the bunker, 
a range plus angle of elevation display was used to measure the height of the target aircraft. What's left of the switch gear in this one? So here we have the guard house. Originally it was disguised as a house, or well, a bungalow, although I think the uh, Russians will have known exactly what this site was, so there's no point trying to camouflage them. And with them all having the same type of design, then they will have known where all the other sites were. It's uh, such a shame that the landowner let it get in this state, because when it would have been handed back to the uh, landowner. It would have been in reasonable condition. I mean, they're just the RF would have just stepped out one day and they'd taken most of the gear out of it, but it would have been a good little place still. Such a shame. And um, the staircase would be down there. Obviously, the farmers put a huge water tank on on top of it and um, a concrete slab so you can't get in there no more. Um, it's full of asbestos down there anyway and it was completely burnt out just like a lot of them now apart from the museums and stuff one of several rooms in the bungalow leads to this main stairwell everything needed in the bunker including people equipment and spares passes through here the 300 foot long access tunnel slopes gently into the cliff and ends 36 feet below the level of the guard room floor the eight foot square tunnel is made of 18 inch thick reinforced concrete. After the 90 degree bend at the bottom of the tunnel, on the left is the transformer cage which contains the mains transformer which provides the 400 volt supply to both the machine and the switch rooms. Um. So yeah, that's all that's really left is a few light fittings. Um, and that's about it. Didn't show you the uh, remains of the blast shutters on the windows actually, so I'll go show you those now. Scared this shit out of me. This what looks like to be a toilet, or was a toilet area, and as you can see it's smashed, I don't know why the vandals do that, there you can see one of the blast shutters, and another one, yeah, they aren't opening anymore. Just an empty shell, what a shame. Original radiator there. The RAF loved their uh, home comforts, especially in that, like a place like Bempton where it was very bleak. Another toilet area, toilet in there, sink there, looks like some sort of a uh, towel holder so they can dry their hands. Little fireplace.
What a shame it was have to go like this. Hello there. So here's the uh, original entrance to the site, the original gates by the looks of it. Still standing. They're thinking what's going on up here. There we go, look. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll go over to the uh, emergency exit and uh, show you that. Hello, you. You all right? Hey? No? You don't want a good stroke in? Come on then, I'm off to the emergency exit if you come in to have a look. Come on. The cows think I'm farmer and I've come to uh, feed them. Or oh, they know that it's around this time that they get fed. And they're all making their way this way because um, apparently the landowner does patrol the site every hour. So maybe they know something that I don't. I don't know where Clive's gone. So I'm going that way. That's why they're all chasing him. <laughs> oh, hey, up. Two of them getting hanky panky over that. The second Type 14 was a Mark 8, fitted with a standard antenna mounted on a concrete plinth near to the emergency exit. The Type 14 head produced a planned position display indicating range and direction. See how land on there's a uh Knocked the uh, air vent in there, one of the air intakes, and he's also filled it with debris because I believe there was people abseiling down into the bunker, something I would not want to do. And this is the emergency exit. I'll try and show you in there. the emergency exit. Although intended for emergency use, this route is used by heads personnel as a convenient shortcut to the radar heads. The exit passageway and stairwell doubles as the fresh air inlet for the cooling and air conditioning plant. It provides yet another route to the surface for the many cables connecting the heads to the bunker. There are two cable chambers off the stairwell. These provide access to the network of cable runs linking the aerial heads to the bunker. There are four flights of steel stairs leading from the bunker floor to the surface. On the top flight, the large wall-mounted junction box is intended to allow connection of mobile radar heads. These standby heads would be used if the fixed heads were put out of operation by weather or hostile action.
nosy boggers. They're all going to charge me, or? Hello. None of you have got COVID, have you? No? Hello? Come here. All right up. Put her down, you don't know where she's been. Well, thank you for watching. Um, from me and the cows, take care and I'll see you all again soon.